Hi everyone, welcome to science. Um, today we are going to be starting a brand new unit. Um, the unit that we're going to be starting today is our unit on evolutionary history. Um, so we're going to be starting with lesson 1.2. So let's go ahead and jump into the lesson. If you have a piece of paper and a pencil, those are a couple things that might be helpful for you as we go throughout this lesson so that you can take a second to jot down some of your ideas. So let's jump in. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna to do to kind of warm up today is we're going to be looking at a fossil. Here's our fossil right here. This is a picture of a fossil that was just taken out of the ground and no one knows exactly what type of an organism that it is. But one way that scientists identify a fossil of an animal that they don't know is to think about what are some animals that they already know that might have some similarities um, to the fossil that they have recently discovered? Um, so as you can see here, there's lots of different types of bones that you can look at. And so what I want you to do is take a look at the image and start to think about, do any of these fossils look like bones from other animals that you might be more familiar with? So I want you to go ahead and in a second here, you're gonna to start to jot those down. You may want to talk about specific features. And as you do that, really focus on describing what you're seeing. You not only want to say what you think it looks similar to, but make sure as a scientist, we will always wanna be explaining why exactly do we think that part of this fossil looks like an animal that you maybe already are more familiar with. So let's go ahead and go ahead and pause the video. You can jot down some of your ideas or you can just think those independently to yourself. So go ahead and take a second, pause the video and think about what are some animals that look similar to our newly discovered fossil right here. Okay, so if you thought of maybe a crocodile or a dog, maybe you thought this leg looked a little bit like your dog's leg, um, you may have also thought of a dinosaur. Those are not necessarily all the answers. You could have come up with a lot of different things. Remember that as long as you were describing what you saw, that's the main point. We wanna to start to think about how can we start to make some connections with this fossil to animals that we're already more familiar with in our everyday life. And the reason that we do that is that scientists that study evolutionary history are studying the history of life on Earth. They may not always be studying things that we can see today. So this video that we're gonna watch next is gonna be a video that helps us to understand a little bit better how those scientists think. Um, our role in this unit is going to be very similar to the role that the scientist is taking on in this video. Um, so as you're watching, I want you to be considering what is the scientist's role? What is her job with the newly found fossil that she has discovered? Because like I said, that is gonna be what our role is throughout this entire unit. So let's take a second to go ahead and watch this video. So they speaking? Audrey Mosley, Natural History Museum Director. You're a hard person to reach. Apologies, I've been in my dick side in Pakistan and we've been busy excavating. Are you still arriving next week? Yes, I'll be there. And I've already shipped the selection of fossils we discussed. Great. How about the ship? Hold on one second. That looks interesting. Wow. Did you find a new fossil? Hello? I'm sorry, I have got to go. But Dr. Sadiq. Yeah, but Dr. Sadiq. Yeah, but yeah, but. Welcome to the Natural History Museum. One adult? Oh, you're a researcher. I'm the visiting paleontologist, Dr. Nella Sadiq. Dr. Sadiq, six month residency? Already in the staff list. Great. Some crates should have also arrived from Pakistan with uh, ancient mammals, crocodilian, and dinosaur fossils. Yes, it looks like they just arrived. 
and they are in preparation lab. That's one level down. Oh, great. I'll head over and get started. All right, see you around. See you. Dr. City, it's an honor to finally meet you. The honor is mine. This is Jim Barker. She does all of our publicity here and gets word out about all of our new exhibits. Yes, thanks so much for lending us all these specimens for the new show. It's going to be huge. You're welcome. I'm dying to ask. Last week when we were on the phone, did I overhear you making a new discovery? Yes, you did. And I have it right here. We found an intriguing new fossil skull, a recent find. Fabulous. Let's put it in the new exhibit. But we don't even know what it is. We can display it till it's fully identified and studied. Maybe we can make an exception just this once. I'm afraid we can't. We have to identify it. Without that, we wouldn't know where to put it in the museum. But think about the excitement that this could generate. I mean, this is a completely new fossil. Technically, it's millions of years old, but I see your point. Excited visitors is a good thing. Will you be studying the skull here? Yes, and if I can work fast enough, maybe I can identify it in time. Okay, we'll see how it goes then. We can have some students help you if needed. Definitely. With their help, it'll go much faster. All right. We'll leave you to it then. Let me know when you find out more about that mystery fossil. I will do that. Okay. So in that fossil, in that video, excuse me, Dr. Sadiq said that we can't put the fossil in the museum until we are able to identify it. So Dr. Sadiq is a paleontologist, and one of the things that paleontologists do is that they study fossils um, and identify them in order to understand what is the ancient history of the life on Earth, things that we can no longer see. So this image that you thought about at the beginning of this video is the exact same fossil that she found in Pakistan. So we're gonna think, start to think even more about this as we work throughout this first unit. And we're going to be thinking about what part of the museum do you think that this fossil belongs? So some of those initial thoughts you had at the beginning of this unit are gonna be super important as we continue throughout this lesson. Okay. So we ended the last video by saying that our role as paleontologists is going to be to figure out where exactly does our new fossil belong in the museum. So one of the ways that scientists use to categorize organisms is they can organize them by different species. So a species is a group of organisms of the same kind in one or more populations that do not reproduce with organisms from another group. So off to the side here, you can see these are examples of individual different species right here. So what scientists do is they go ahead and look at some different animals. And here's a kind of an example of three different types of animals. Um, a couple animals are animals from the past, and then a camel, most of you um, might be familiar with, are an animal that is actually currently living on our planet. So what scientists do is they not only start to take a look at these animals and start to make some specific observations. For example, we might notice that all animals are walking on four legs, but they start to look at some of the patterns in their behavior as well to start to see if there's some other ways that they can group animals. So in a second here, you're going to take a look at some different uh, species and you're gonna think about how could we sort these or group those species um, together in some different ways. So as you're doing that, not only do I want you to think about some of the physical characteristics like the legs that I just talked about, but take time to kind of read through each of the cards. You're gonna notice if you take a look at these three cards right here, um, that the camel and the titillantifus, which is a tricky word to say, um, both are plant-eating animals, um, where, whereas the pacatius is an animal that is a hunting animal. So we may categorize these two animals in a category of plant-eaters and this uh, species in a category 
of an animal that hunts and eats other animals. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to click through these slides. You can scroll throughout the video and take time to read a little bit about each organism. You can take a look at some of the bone structure of each of these different species and start to think about what are some things that maybe you see that are either similar um, about their structures or what are some things that you read that are similar traits that they might have. And as you go through, you're gonna notice that there are sometimes um, a soccer ball or an apple, and you might wonder what exactly those are for. Well, those are for you to kind of have a sense of how big this animal was. So that might be another way that you might categorize the animals is in terms of size. Any type of categorization is going to be okay. Anything that you see, just like when we were looking at these camels um, and saying that they all have four legs, okay? These animals as well, you're gonna wanna go through and think about what are the similarities that you can see to start to group those. So I'm gonna go ahead and click through the different species so that you can see each of these different species cards and then scroll back and forth and take your time to scroll through the video, pause, do a little bit of reading, make some observations. You might want to jot down some of your different groups. And when we're done, we'll go back and go over what were some possibilities that maybe you came up with. Okay, so those were nine different species that you may have sorted in a few different ways. So I'm just gonna give you a couple ideas that I came up with for ways that you may have sorted them. Um, you may have sorted them based on some different features and that's totally okay. These are just a couple ideas that I had. Um, so you could have sorted them into two categories based on where they live. So these are the organisms from those um, different slides that live in water. And these are all the organisms that live on land. So maybe that was one way that you chose to sort them. Another way that you could have chosen to sort them is based on how they move. And if you're doing that, you may have sorted them based on organisms that fly, organisms that swim, and then also some organisms that walk. And if you also notice, we might say that these all walk on four legs because we know some animals um, walk on two legs like humans. So as we go back to our thinking from the beginning of class, we now have a letter that's going to relate to the fossil that we looked at at the beginning of this unit. So this, this uh, email says, we want to make sure that the mystery fossil in the museum with a group of other species that it makes the most sense for our fossil to be with. So that was kind of that question we posed at the beginning of this lesson. And we said, that's what we're gonna be looking at throughout this entire unit. So to make this decision, you're gonna to need to work by making careful observations and spending time comparing the bones of the mystery fossil to bones and body structures of other organisms, which we just started to practice. So in this email, they're asking that our intern paleontologist, which is you, 
at the museum quickly examine the mystery fossil bones and give us some initial ideas about what species in the museum the mystery fossil might be similar to. Their first examination of the mystery fossil tells us that there are three main types of organisms that the mystery fossil could be grouped with. So we've narrowed it down to three specific um, organisms, and that is either the whales, a wolf, or a crocodile. So these are going to be sort of the three claims or the three ideas that we start to work through as paleontologists in this unit. As a reminder, here's our fossil over here. And so just like that email just told us, our options are either going to be that our mystery fossil belongs in an exhibit with whales. Claim number two says that the mystery fossil is gonna belong in an exhibit with the wolves. And then claim three says that our mystery fossil is going to be in um, an exhibit with crocodiles, with um, the reptiles in the museum. So those are the three claims that we're going to be looking at and trying to decide which one do we as paleontologists um, want to argue is most closely related to this mystery fossil we found. Okay, so like we were saying to end that last activity, this is our mystery fossil. We're going to be moving forward deciding which of these three claims fits it best. Is it most closely related to a whale, a wolf, or a crocodile? So one of the things that scientists use as a really important tool, especially for paleontologists, is that they look at the structure of the fossils that they find. They can't tell a ton about um, this organism right away when they first dig it out of the ground. Um, they don't have some of the same information that you had earlier when you were grouping some of your organisms. Um, but they do have a lot of different bones, a lot of different structures that they can look at. So when they are making observations about these structures, what they want to do is make some really precise observations. So that means that they're going to really make sure that they're describing what they're seeing really, really specifically. So these two animals, this is a, a Pachycetus and this is a Titanotylophus, um, very different looking species. Um, but if you notice, if you are a paleontologist and you are making an observation and you make an observation about one of these two organisms and you say that it has legs, that is an uh, observation that's not very precise. You can't really tell which of those two organisms we're talking about. But if instead you make sure that your observation looks a little bit more like the second observation, which says that not only does it just say that it has legs, but it's now specified that it has four legs, it says that each leg has at least two long bones in it, Okay, I'm starting to have a feeling I know which one that this observation is talking about. And then also, this is where we use this soccer ball. Um, we say that the, so the legs seem to be about the same length as six to eight soccer balls on top of one of each other. And when you look, the Pachycetus is, has legs that is only maybe two to three soccer balls. So we know that it is probably, this observation is not talking about this organism. As we wrap up this lesson, um, we're going to be completing a reading that's going to show you why really making sure that we have precise um, observations of what we're looking at is important. So we're going to read through an article called The Cat That Wasn't a Cat at All. And as you read, I want you to consider the following questions. The first one is, and this has to do with some of the observations that were made. The first scientist, as you're going to read, is going to misidentify the fossil of um, a big cat. Think about what were the observations, what were the structures that he used that caused him to make this misidentification? And then what was the um, observation of the structure that the second scientist used to um, determine that the first scientist had misidentified the fossils? So really as you read, you wanna be focusing in on what are those observations that the two scientists are making. So let's go ahead and jump into that reading. The title of our reading is called The Cat That Wasn't a Cat at All. So when it comes to fossils, cases of mistaken identity are not uncommon. Paleontologists might think that they have found a fossil from one species, when actually it turns out to be from a different species. 
often these mistakes are corrected as paleontologists make closer and more careful observations. One interesting case of mistaken fossil identity happened in 1796 when workers dug up a pile of strange looking fossilized bones. A scientist observed the fossils and noticed long limbs and big claws. Without making careful comparisons to other fossils, the scientist guessed that the bones belonged to a huge cat, much bigger than a lion. He named it Megalonyx, which means giant claw, and believed that it might still exist in the western part of North America at the time of the discovery. Here's an image that's based on some of the drawings that the scientists made from the bones that they have, that they found. Years later, scientists studied the fossils and made more careful observations. After making close comparisons with fossils from other species, this scientist determined that the animal often walked on its hind legs. Cats do not walk on their hind legs, so this discovery probably meant that the fossil was not a cat. The scientists discovered that the fossils actually belonged to a giant sloth. This species had been extinct for a long time, since the last ice age, more than 10,000 years earlier. Even though the mistake became clear with time, the name of the giant sloth was never changed. The Magna Megalonyx jeffersoni, which isn't a cat at all, is a reminder that it is important to make careful and precise observations in science.